Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program Fuckers. And today I'd like to talk about wristwatch snobbery and consumerism. Wristwatch snobbery and consumerism. And this is a lead on from uh, my good friend Simon Crane, who recently received a rotary wristwatch from his, um, his wife as an anniversary present. And it's an interesting thing because um, Simon, Simon's a, a working class lad. He's like Archie. Archie's got to work for a buck. I, I don't have land holdings or um, minions or lackeys to do the hard work. I've got to do the fucking work myself. And it's very interesting. The whole, the whole status in this world, the whole luxury segment now is geared at people like Archie and Simon. I mean, you think about it, brands like Breguet. I mean, Sir Winston Churchill wore a Breguet. These were pretty important fuckers. And this is the reason the brand really hasn't been heard of by, um, how would we put it, less less blue blood individuals and uh, it's an amazing time we live in I mean you go back to the 1960s and uh, if you were really well off you might have a Vacheron Constantine a Patek a brand of that caliber and let me just tell you something else that's interesting people didn't have hordes of watches if you were very well off in the early 60s, you had one watch. You were probably, if you did work, you were a professional, a doctor, a surgeon, an important individual. And you had a Vacheron Constantine. You only had one watch. In fact, Patek, when you took your Patek in for servicing, they would lend you another watch whilst your watch was being serviced. Materialism, hoarding, collecting was really frowned upon. It was a bad thing to do. It was uncouth. It was wasteful. It was hoarding. This is a time when the Western world had just come out of rationing. Rationing? And to actually have a collection or a hoard was considered, it was considered bad form, fuckers. It was bad form. So you had, you may have had a Vacher and Constantine, but you did not, you did not have a collection of uh, wristwatches. You had one good watch. You didn't have a collection. That was bad form. And uh, with the demise of rationing, I mean, England had rationing, Australia had ra After World War II, rationing was a serious, serious occurrence in society. There were fucking shortages. And let me say this to you fuckers. It's kind of funny now, you look at these things and... Um, Mere mortals like Archie, Simon Crane, who's a, uh, he's a butcher. He has aspirations of Jega Le Coutre, high-end brands. Simon's been talking about Rolex. He probably wants one of those. And I mean, for God's sake, know your place. In society, if we went back to 1960s England with rationing and shortages, there's no way in the world a mere butcher could uh, afford a Jaeger Le Coutre, a Rolex, a Breguet. These, these, were, these, these were brands that were too far up the food chain. Who did he think he is? And this is the amazing thing. Simon recently got given a rotary watch by his wife. Very interesting. 
I know of an 80 to 90 year old genetics professor. That's right. He was a genetics professor and his family gave him when he graduated from Oxford. When he graduated from Oxford, fuckers, they gave him a rotary wristwatch. And this is so amazing. We've now got Simon the Butcher saying what a piece of shit it is when I know of a, uh, an Oxford graduate who that was his gift from his parents. And uh, they were very lower middle class fuckers. He later became a genetics professor. He basically invent, invented in vitro fertilization. Genetics genius. And um, that was his gift, a rotary wristwatch. And I think the bloody thing was even gold capped. And he loved his rotary. I remember seeing him, this would have been, oh, five or six years ago. And uh, he knew I was a watch person because uh, my friend had told him. And uh, I had my Patek Philippe on. And uh, he showed me his, uh, his rotary wristwatch given to him by his family. And uh, the, 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 the thing is, he was very proud of the rotary. He'd looked after it. It was sort of like a 30... Three mil sort of dress watch, very uh, conservative. And uh, I gotta tell you, fuckers, I gotta tell you, you know, <coughs> this was a gift for an Oxford graduate, an Oxford graduate. And uh, he, he told me, he said, you know, Rotary was the official supplier for the F British Army in the 40s. And uh, it's, it was uh, Rotary itself um, during the Second World War. Huge numbers joined the army, of course, and put a Rotary wristwatch on their wrist. And Rotary today is still a hugely, <coughs> it's a huge, it's a hugely recognized brand in the UK. And uh, I got to tell you, you've now got, Simon Crane, who cringe at the thought of having a rotary on their wrist. And uh, there you go. An Oxford, an Oxford graduate who became a, a professor, a genetics professor. He practically invented in vitro fertilization. And uh, he, had a, he had a rotary. And this is what's happened. The middle class itself... <coughs> They've changed. They've now, you know, with the, with the, uh, the whole, the way, the changes of the workforce, we've now got working folk <coughs> who think it's beneath them. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. A rotary wristwatch. And I mean, I know Rotary's done some dodgy things, okay, and... In recent times, they've, they've basically used movements made in Switzerland and China, which are then re-imported into Switzerland so the watch can get marketed as being a, uh, a Swiss watch. I know! Rotary! You just look up Rotary on the wiki page. It, it'll fucking tell you. And this is the reality that we live in now. I mean, this is how status... Everyone has this huge dibs on themselves. If it's good for an Oxford graduate, it's good. It's good for most people in society, fuckers. And this is the reality. Snobbery and luxury brands. What do you say, fuckers? What do you say? I'm Archie Luxury. This has been my special. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Nice one, Archie. I didn't know that about Rotary.